I'm still new to the trucking world and have only one walk under my belt thus far. So today I'm going to attempt to find the best beginner trek abroad. I'm Crystal and this is Von Hala Adventures. Last year, I walked 500 miles on the Camino de Santiago and unexpectedly fell in love with long distance treks. This feels so good. However, when I got home, I received the news that I had a degenerative disc in my back. Wow, this really sucks. While I can't say this was easy to hear, it's lit a fire inside me to not give up on my dreams to walk around the world, one step at a time. While I was walking on the Camino Francis, I met so many people who had done pilgrimages and treks all across the world, and they filled my mind with so many different ideas, and I've been dreaming up a bucket list ever since. And so I have a huge list of walks I wanna do. And just researching even more when I got home, there's hundreds of walks across the world, which makes it hard to figure out where to go next. And I definitely say I'm still a beginner trekker. Just from one trek alone, one pilgrimage, I'm not an expert. So I have to find something that's semi-beginner level, but it's at least gonna stretch me past what I did last time. I'd like a little bit more elevation gain, but I don't really want a backpack. I'm not ready for that yet. And I definitely know I wanted to be outside of the USA. I thought it would be fun to start kind of mapping this out. So B actually made me a board. It's not pro level, but hey. There's a couple different things I really want to keep in mind to help choose which walk is the best. First and foremost, the difficulty. I think I want to look at the mileage per day. So next up is how long is this track? So like, what's the total amount of days that it will most likely take me? Given that I also film, I have to tack on extra days. So I need to remember that when choosing a hike. Next up would be elevation gain and loss. I need to remember that some of these hikes that I wanna go on, they might be straight up and straight down every single day. I might not be ready for that. So I definitely need to pay attention to this. Next up would be the infrastructure. If I can spell that, infrastructure. Is it gonna be backpacking? Are there gonna be refuges, albergues, hostels, or only hotels? I need to know if based on the mileage per day, if there's gonna be enough infrastructure so that I can really make that all work. Okay, I feel like that's pretty good in order for me to figure out the difficulty. Now there's all this other stuff. One, oh. Don't mind me, you guys. <laughs> luggage transport. Because I'm gonna be filming this next trek, the luggage transport is super important for me. Okay, then I need to make sure the time of year is gonna line up. I wanna go in the spring. So we're gonna look at that, but I might be open to something else here, we don't know. Next, safety. As a solo female traveler, this is something I think of. When I think of safety, it's kind of looking at that country as a whole and just seeing if there's anything I should be aware of in that country that's going on. And the next step is cost. Depending on the length and the infrastructure and also how far away it is, I just want to keep this budget in mind. So these are all the things we need to get started on. So I think already just by looking at this, there's a couple hikes I can probably get rid of. So let's consult the bucket list. So in my Google sheet that I've made of all these hikes, I'm looking over them and I'm realizing some of these are just not doable for me because of my current fitness levels. Annapurna and Nepal, that is a dream, but that's something I feel I need to work up to. So. That one is out. Other one, Lycian Way, Turkey. The Lycian Way is a 332 mile trek along the coast of Turkey, and it takes usually around 30 to 45 days to complete. While it looks absolutely phenomenal, there are a couple concerns I have. Mainly safety due to stray dogs that actually do attack trekkers sometimes. And the trail's not as well marked as what I'm used to. So I feel like I should have better navigational skills and possibly go with a friend before I attempt this particular trek. And then there's a couple other ones that I know for sure are backpacking trails. I'm not really feeling called to that. So just because of my intuition, 
I'm not gonna do them. Plus, I'd have to be way more prepared than I am now. So I'm gonna cross off the Appalachian Way, the Pacific Coast Trail. Those just aren't for me. So let's just eliminate those ones right off the bat. Next one, Iceland, the land of fire and ice. I've been dreaming of going to Iceland since my husband told me about it. It sounds absolutely spectacular. Every single person I've ever spoke to about Iceland raves about it. The Lugavaker Trail in Iceland has been on my radar due to its ruggedness and beauty. It is only 32 miles and would take around four days. However, there are some river crossings that can be a bit dangerous going solo. Plus, I know from friends that hiking in Iceland can be a bit treacherous at times and my navigational skills need to get a bit better. I think this would best be done on a much longer trip to Iceland in general, where I could combine other sightseeing with the trail and possibly go with a friend instead of by myself. So for that reason, I'm gonna cross off any of my hikes in Iceland for now. One of the treks that I've been looking at for a while is the Tour du Mont Blanc. It is, it looks magnificent. I mean, it's in the Alps and it goes through three different countries. Italy, France, and Switzerland. So for terms of that, I'm really excited about it. But I've been searching around on here to find information about the route. And I actually forgot to put that in terms of difficulty because some of these treks that I'm looking at, there's a defined route, maybe with a couple variations. But for Tour de Mont Blanc, there's so many different trails that intersect that every time I've tried routing it, I'm so confused and my brain actually hurts. Every time I've gone into some groups to ask about it, they're all telling me it's a little late in the year to be booking myself. So if I wanted to book it, I would need to use a trekking company at this point. It's also rated as difficult. But the one reason I was kind of thinking that's okay is because it's shorter in length in terms of days. It's probably be about 10 days. But something tells me that the fact that I'm having such a hard time with it, I'm almost getting frustrated and mad about that. And the last thing I want to do is show up to a trail feeling frustrated already. I think this is one of the few treks I would hire a trekking company to book for me. For that reason, I'm going to cross it off as the next trek for me. And I think I could really use the training. So I could maybe do it later this year, or early next year, but I can use the first walk I do as almost training for a Tour de Mont Blanc. It's winter, I really haven't been hiking that much, so, but it does look really beautiful. Not that long ago, I put a poll out on this channel asking you all what walks you were interested in or ones you had recommended. And one of the ones that came up frequently was the Camino Portuguese. It is another one of the routes on the Camino de Santiago, but it's in Portugal. And I am interested in doing this, and I've had friends that walk this, and it looks gorgeous and the idea of another Camino, another pilgrimage that's gonna land in Santiago sounds magical. However, I don't know why, but I'm not feeling called to it specifically this year. So I don't know, something's just not feeling right about it. So I'm gonna get rid of that one too. Looking over this list, there's one that's really standing out to me and that's the Via Franchingina. The Via Franchingina is one of the most incredible sounding pilgrimages. It involves four countries, starting in Canterbury, England, and then crossing over France, Switzerland, and then ending at the Vatican in Italy. This would be a very long journey and would take at least 100 days with no rest days, so I'd really need to figure out the visa situation. I've also heard sections of France can be quite remote, so I better know how to navigate better than I do now. It's also gonna be quite expensive and there's no luggage transport until further down south. So this might not be the right year for me. However, I definitely have this one on my bucket list for next year. I think it's best that I wait for the Via Franchingina until I have a couple more walks under my belt and feel more comfortable navigating. And I gotta figure out the whole visa situation. I just don't feel ready for that based on all of it. So maybe next year. Ooh, that's hot. Okay, after a little bit of a break, I'm realizing a few different things. 
As you might have seen in my previous video, I have a degenerative disc in my back and I really want to push myself in a more physical way than I did on the Camino Francis. Here's the new parameters I kind of want to put around this. For mileage per day, I'd like to max out at about 15 miles. This feels really doable compared to what I did on the Camino Francis because usually a 15 to 20 mile day is what I did and 20 miles was about where I really wanted to stop. But I wanna add more elevation so I can really work on my glutes and my core and my legs and just kinda feel a little bit of a burn just for physical reasons. So for elevation gain loss, I know that I can do in terms of feet, a good 4,000 foot elevation gain and loss in a day. However, I've never done that over multiple, multiple days. So I'm feeling around 2,000-ish feet for gain and loss per day would push me to this kind of new level for myself. Now with 15 miles, mm, I'm thinking this could be a stretch for me. So even a little bit less would be fine, but this feels like a sweet spot where I'd push myself past like some limitations and really grow, but not go so far overboard that I'm gonna have to stop the track. How long is it? I'm thinking maybe about 30 to 45 days. Now I have to add on extra days because I'm filming. It takes me two to three hours more a day than most people just because I'm filming stuff. So I have to think about that in terms of my, my days are gonna be longer. Oh, and infrastructure. For sure, I know that I need in order to charge my camera gear. And I know this might be different than most people, but I'm gonna want to stay in hostels, preferably. I'll stay in hotels if I have to. So now thinking about that, I can start looking at these next hikes and seeing if they're gonna be exactly what I need. Let's go back and consult our bucket list and see which ones are really gonna fit these parameters. There you go. The last walks that I have to look up and really research are in the UK, so Scotland or England and Ireland. Of all of those that I'm looking at, I think the next one to look up is the Coast to Coast Walk in England. The Coast to Coast Path in England is made up by connecting together dozens of existing footpaths, bridleways, minor roads, and other crossings. It starts in St. V's in Cumbria and goes to Robin Hood's Bay in North Yorkshire. Researching it, it sounds like in terms of fitness, I'd be just fine. And there's definitely accommodation and luggage transport along the route. And coming in at just a little over 208 miles. So overall, this is very high on my list. So the coast to coast is looking pretty promising. I feel really good about it, but there's two more walks that I would roll into one. I know for sure that's kind of the only thing I know. And that is the West Highland Way and the Great Glen Way in Scotland. We did just go to Scotland not that long ago. And so far it's my favorite country I've ever been in. So let's do some research and see how doable that is. The West Highland Way is 96 miles and is Scotland's most famous long distance walking route. And I love Scotland. It's rugged, yet a well-established trail with good signage. It has full accommodation and luggage transport along the route, which is a plus. And it can be combined with the Great Glen Way to add another 70 miles to the entire trip. The elevation gain and mileage per day can be adjusted to suit my needs, which is awesome. And it looks like there's already some great itineraries laid out on the website so it'd be easy to route since I'm already a little late on booking anything for the year so this might be just perfect for my needs so okay. I need to make my choice there is the coast to coast in England or the West Highland Way in Scotland Scotland is obviously I mean, yeah. It's Scotland. I love Scotland. But the coast to coast is also, it's Northern England. I haven't explored England as an adult. And it's the entire length. It's literally the coast to coast of England. Mm -hmm. Scotland sounds great. After talking with B, I'm realizing that what, what I'm really excited about is the West Highland Way and the Great Glen Way in Scotland. Woo, Scotland! I think that's where we're going next, or at least I am. B might join me, but 
the one thing I need to remember is booking fills up really fast. So I need to get onto booking this as soon as possible. So we'll see you all next week as I share with you how I'm gonna route this thing and also book it. Bye everybody, see you next week. We're going to Scotland! Woo!